making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. Hi, and welcome to part four of processing image sequences with Adobe After Effects. In this section, I'm just going to cover loading a raw sequence as opposed to a JPEG sequence. So again, <clears throat> I needed to clear my throat there. Excuse me. So again, we go into the project window, double click, and now instead of grabbing these JPEGs, which are smaller individual files, we are going to grab raw. So the raw images coming from your cameras are full of a lot of data. It's raw data. It's not actually a photograph. It's actually pure data. So you need to understand there's going to be a lot more you can do with this. There's far more, uh, let's call it variants or variations of capabilities in regards to hue, saturation, luminance, all that stuff, because you have a lot more data. If you'll notice, because it's a raw file, Adobe was smart enough to figure out that it's a camera raw sequence. So I don't need to do any of that stuff that we did for the JPEGs to fool Adobe. It's pretty smart. Make sure that your camera raw sequence box is checked. If it's not checked, you're only going to get one image. And that really isn't footage. That's an image. So check that. Make sure you have a good numerical sequence and that none of the files are missing. And I could sit here and count the files or check the directory and see how many files, but I really don't care. And you'll notice it created a, a XMP file. And this is for image number 2683, which happens to be the first image. That's because I've already played with this sequence. This file holds the information that I'm going to show you that we're going to create right now. So in any case, without further ado, let's click open this puppy up. Let it load. Lots of data. Very cool. And we have beautiful imagery here. You can zoom in and you can see there's unbelievable crispiness here. This was shot with a 50 millimeter prime lens with a Canon T2i. Amazing. It has a lot of colors. So that would justify the size of the file. And the file size is directly related to how much or how many colors there are in the image. So if you're shooting a night sky, for example, with uh, just stars and a lot of black, your image sizes are going to be a lot smaller. So keep that in mind. But in any case here, I can change all kinds of things. So if I underexpose something, for example, which this is not, that's actually early morning shadows. So it's not underexposed. And it's the way I set up the camera. But if I wanted to bring up the exposure, I can do that. And I can do it very nicely because this is a raw file and there's a lot of data to work with. Again, learn about the raw processor from Adobe. There are many books uh, from various photographers. There are very, very many tutorials from a variety of people. Okay. Uh, international. There are video tutorials at Adobe itself about how to use this tool. There are a lot of functions in this tool. You can sharpen, you can do noise reduction, you can do all kinds of things. And I just want to show you, this is one of the most common things that people will use. And that's sharpening and noise reduction. I'm just going to zoom into 100% and show you what that does. This is actually a very crisp and clear set. But if I go and start changing and doing noise reduction, you will start seeing little subtle things happening. Here's some color noise reduction. It's very subtle. You really need to look like in these areas here on the edges. I can sharpen. You see that? Look at these edges right here. 
course, you don't want to overdo it. But in any case, we can just reset that. And now it looks really horrible. Look at that. So the sharpening is way too high. I'm going to take that down, soften it up a little bit. Actually, we don't need any because it was sharp. Well, maybe just a tad right there. See that? Nice little sharp edges. And then we can mask it. And now it's even a little more detail. But this is stuff you really need to play with a lot. Okay? You need to familiarize yourself and get yourself going on how to process photos in RAW. There are so many features and functions. Uh, you can even add effects. If I wanted to add grain, don't want to do that. Uh, post crop vignetting, this has to do uh, with getting rid of dark areas in the corners that could be brought in by your lens. Then there are camera presets that you can use. I mean, this thing is ultimately powerful. All kinds of different possibilities. Split toning, and this is a really cool, the lens correction. Some of the lenses actually have pre-configured uh, correction settings so that you can load a profile and you'll see that for example this was an EF 50 millimeter 1.4 Adobe automatically saw from the information that was embedded or the metadata in in the file that this was shot with a 50 millimeter 1.4 and so it can do a correction and it actually did which is kinda cool now this is not available for all camera lenses okay so it's got quite a few but if your lens is not in there there's an actual toolkit so that you can create it not easily done but I just wanted to point that out that there are quite some powerful tools available in the raw processor but let's assume this is all honky-dory I am happy with this and just click OK and now we're right back to where we were with the JPEGs except now we have a raw file so instead I'm gonna rename this and I'm gonna call it hedgehog it's actually hedgehog cactus okay for those of you it's not a hedgehog because I know some of you thought wow what's with that that's not a hedgehog no it's a hedgehog cactus that's what we call a hedgehog cactus and they happen to bloom at this time of the year which is April which is shortly before the release of that big ebook but in any case Hedgehog CAC is raw and 29.97. And why do I call it 29.97? Because it says it's 30 frames. But again, I am going to go into interpret footage, select the main, and I'm going to change that to 29.97. And off we go. And now I just take and drop that right down into my little composition icon so that it creates a composition. And you'll notice it takes a little bit longer for it to process because we have so much more data. But it's still decent. So there's your first frame. Let's go to the last frame. And this will take a few seconds. It's going to go through its little processing thing. Come on. Maybe, maybe not. It's thinking. There we go. And you can see the data is so much bigger. And there we go. There it's open and there it's closed. So we know we have the same sequence or a sequence. And that's a quick way to check and make sure that nothing moved in the camera. So what I usually look for is some sort of an edge that I know will not change. Obviously, if I look at the flowers, that's not good because those do change but the cactus stumps themselves shouldn't move okay so there you have it so that's all good now again rename and you all know this already from the prior videos and we're just gonna go through the same exercises again go to composition settings set your setting to whatever format resolution 1920 by 1080 whatever have you click OK now we're zoomed in and of course now we can start moving this image 
and it's thinking it's processing it's doing a lot of processing I'm using the arrow keys right now because they seem to go a little faster than waiting for trying to move the arrow you see that it's it's just it's thinking so much because these are very large files in any case so I can duplicate this and eh, it's still not there it's really got a lot of processing to do now I have my close-up and I'm just gonna rename that to close-up and then I can duplicate that and maybe grab another version let's open that and we'll get another perspective of a close-up and so on and so forth that's kind of cool duplicate that again and now I'm just gonna make it a, a standard wide shot make sure that your composition settings are still correct HDV now I'm going to simply go to transform fit the comp width now we have the wide shot and so on and so forth same thing with the render queue add the first one in oops sorry add the first one in add it to render queue get your settings straight I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna do these as mp4 uh, yeah h.264 for another agency so this time I want to save them into a different directory which I'm going to create and I'm going to call this uh, TS for tandem stock and now I'm ready to rock and roll save that now I'm going to grab the other two add those to the render queue and again I can add as and create as many files I can do verticals whatever have you and now I'm ready to render so off we go and I'm gonna go have coffee I'll see you soon thanks for watching <laughs>